Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I'd like to talk today about the anti-inflammatory effects of fish oils. Um, now fish oils are thought to have anti-inflammatory effects because they contain two long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids. Uh, and those long-chain uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids are called icosapentaenoic acid or EPA and docosahexaenoic acid or DHA. Um, those fatty acids both belong to the omega-3 family of fatty acids and all that means uh, is that their first double bond uh, is three carbons from the methyl end of the molecule. So if we go to the omega-6 fatty acids for example their first double bond uh, will be six carbons from the methyl end. It's just a way of chemically categorizing the fatty acids and really for, uh, for our purposes it's not really that important so we'll just refer to them as omega-3 fatty acids. Um, it does affect the chemistry and it does affect how they're metabolized but it's it's worth understanding why they're categorized in different ways um, now both of the uh, uh, of the fatty acids uh, in fish oils EPA and DHA uh, are, are highly unsaturated they have five and six double bonds respectively uh, and that makes them quite unstable it makes them able to react with oxygen uh, and that's actually useful to the body because the body can react them with oxygen to create uh, other compounds uh, and in particular um, there are a series of uh, short-lived hormones uh, in uh, the body called eicosanoids uh, and eicosapentaenoic acid is a precursor to the series 3 eicosanoids um, and this is really where they have their anti-inflammatory effects. Now, docosahexaenoic acid can be converted in the body to icosapentaenoic acid through a desaturase and an elongase enzyme. So really, we can think of DHA uh, as a, a substrate for producing more EPA, uh, which accumulates in cell membranes. Um, it actually uh, accumulates with phospholipids. It, it, it forms part of the phospholipid of the membrane. So it's actually a st structural part of the, uh, of the membrane. Uh, and what happens is there's an enzyme called phospholipase A2. Phospho phospholipase A2 comes along and it cleaves the uh, icosapentaenoic acid from its phospholipid. Uh, and that icosapentaenoic acid can then form the series 3 icosanoids. Now those icosanoids can regulate cell function. And one of the things they do uh, is they reduce uh, inflammation. Now this is actually a paradox because the series 3 icosanoids are actually pro-inflammatory. They actually have a slightly mild uh, pro-inflammatory effect. However, um, what happens is that when the series 3 icosanoids are being formed, uh, they use the same enzyme system to form these icosanoids as a, another group of uh, very highly pro-inflammatory uh, icosanoids called the series uh, 2 icosanoids. Uh, and these are formed from arachidonic acid, which is an omega-6 fatty acid that accumulates in cell membranes. It's uh, formed uh, from uh, its parent molecule, which is uh, linoleic acid, or it can be derived directly from the diet. It too forms uh, uh, with phospholipids in the membrane. Uh, it uh, too builds up in cell membranes and phospholipase A2 also cleaves it off its, uh, its uh, a phospholipid uh, a, a group inside the membrane uh, and then it's, for, it's uh, converted using the same cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase enzymes to its pro-inflammatory eicosanoids uh, which are of uh, the series 2. Now if there is only a limited amount of enzymes, cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase enzymes, to convert these two uh, fatty acids to their uh, to their products, uh, if we have um, a, a large amount of icosapentaenoic acid in the cell membranes, it will it will inhibit the conversion of some of the arachidonic acid to these pro-inflammatory, uh, very highly pro-inflammatory uh, series two icosanoids. In that case even though uh, the series 3 icosanoids have, an, and have a pro-inflammatory effect, they are in effect uh, reducing inflammation by inhibiting the formation of these series 2 uh, uh, icosanoids. And that's one way that uh, icosapentaenoic acid is anti-inflammatory. It's a small paradox. Uh, it has actually produces uh, products which are pro-inflammatory, but because it inhibits the production of uh, even more pro-inflammatory uh, uh, icosanoids of the series 2, um, of series 2 icosanoids, uh, it actually has an overall anti-inflammatory effect. 
Uh, there's another reason that omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory, and this doesn't actually relate to fish oils. It relates to the parent compound, alpha-linolenic acid. Alpha-linolenic acid is an essential fatty acid. It's the uh, parent compound of all uh, uh, omega-3 fats in the body. It's converted through a series of elongase and desaturase enzymes to icosapentaenoic acid. And in that process, it actually inhibits the delta-5 desaturase enzyme, which is required to form arachidonic acid. So alpha-linolenic acid, which is derived from plants, can actually uh, decrease the formation of arachidonic acid to a certain extent as well. So omega-3 fats tend to have anti-inflammatory effects. Um, and this is interesting uh, because what we know from nutrition is that the ratio of omega-6 fats, uh, remember the omega-6 fats, uh, uh, omega fat parent compound linoleic acid um, and arachidonic acid in foods will increase the amount of arachidonic acid in cell membranes and that will, have, uh, that will produce uh, more of the series uh, 2 very highly pro-inflammatory uh, eicosanoids uh, and the omega-3 fats will increase the amount of EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid in cell membranes and that will uh, increase the amount of these series 3 uh, eicosanoids that can inhibit the formation of the series 2 eicosanoids. So it's the balance in the diet that we need. We need all of these eicosanoids. There's no such thing as a good or bad eicosanoid. But what we need is a balance between our omega-3 and our omega-6 fats so that we regulate the cells correctly. Uh, and this produces a nice balance of these eicosanoids, which produces a, a, a generally an anti-inflammatory effect and keeps inflammation to a minimum. Because the cells do need inflammatory reactions for uh, particular reasons, particularly the immune system uses inflammation to fight uh, invading pathogens. Um, and this is where the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 uh, fatty acids comes from. Um, the, the typical Western diet may supply uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 uh, to 1 in the ratio of omega-3, uh, omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids, whereas the historical traditional ratio may be as low as uh, 3 to 1 for omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. So we, we generally eat too much omega-6 fat, we don't eat enough omega-3 fat, and therefore we produce too much uh, too many series 2 eicosanoids uh, and these have a very highly uh, uh, inflammatory effect on cells. So by increasing our intake of fish oils what we're effectively doing is we are inhibiting the formation of some of these uh, inf pro-inflammatory uh, series 2 eicosanoids. Um, but there is another reason why uh, fish oils are uh, anti-inflammatory. Um, this, what I've just described, is called um, the classical uh, eicosanoid pathway. Uh, there is a more recently discovered uh, group of pathways uh, that produce another uh, group of chemicals. Uh, and this is where we come to di uh, DHA, docosahexanoic acid. It was originally believed that docosahexanoic acid was simply a precursor of icosapentanoic acid. And it was icosapentanoic acid that formed uh, the series 3 eicosanoids, which had the anti-inflammatory effects. Um, however, there is a non-classical um, uh, pathway for the metabolism of the omega-3 fats, and this is only rec has only recently been discovered. Um, both EPA and DHA can be converted through other enzymes into other anti-inflammatory compounds. Uh, for example, there are the resolvins of the E-class and the resolvins of the D-class, which are formed from icosapentaenoic acid and docosahexanoic acid, uh, respectively. Uh, and they have uh, pronounced anti-inflammatory effects on cells. Uh, and this isn't part of the classical... Um, uh, icosanoid uh, metabolism pathway. Uh, it's recently discovered um, and these chemicals are still being identified. So it, rather than simply being a precursor of uh, icosapentaenoic acid, docosahexanoic acid actually has uh, its own uh, pathways which produce anti-inflammatory compounds. And this is very interesting when we look at the brain. Uh, the brain is made up largely of fatty acids and when we look at the content of the brain, uh, when we look at the uh, composition of the fats in the brain, there is a very high uh, concentration of uh, DHA, of docosahexanoic acid. Um, uh, particularly uh, docosahexanoic acid appears to be required um, during uh, fetal development and it's required in childhood 
uh, and it appears to have uh, cognitive benefits. Now one of the reasons this may uh, occur is because the docosahexaenoic acid uh, is metabolized to a, a group of, uh, of, uh, of another group of, of chemicals uh, and they're called the docosatrienes. Uh, and the docosatrienes uh, are still being characterized, but they're uh, one subgroup of the docosatrienes are called the neuroprotectins. Uh, and these neuroprotectins uh, are, appear to have uh, very beneficial effects uh, on neuronal health. Uh, and in particular, they seem to be able to combat the effects uh, of oxidative stress. And they seem to be able to protect the neurons uh, from uh, damage and from, from cell death. Um, so docosahexaenoic acid appears to have uh, its own anti-inflammatory effects that are distinct from the classical uh, eicosanoid pathway. Um, so not only uh, are the, uh, are, are the uh, omega-3 fats uh, anti-inflammatory because of their conversion to the series 3 eicosanoids, they also, uh, both eicosapentanoic uh, uh, acid and docosahexaenoic acid appear to have other pathways that cause uh, the formation of anti-inflammatory compounds. Now this is Let's go back to fish oils. Uh, we, we know why they now have anti-inflammatory effects, but if we go back to fish oils and we say, well, we don't, why do we take fish oils? Why particularly fish oils? Why not take alpha-linolenic acid, which is the parent compound of all of these uh, compounds? If we take in alpha-linolenic acid, we can, through a series of enzymes, we can create icosapentaenoic acid in our body, uh, and we can create docosahexaenoic acid. Uh, and alpha-linolenic alpha acid uh, is present in, mainly in plants. Uh, now that has advantages because plants tend not to uh, accumulate toxins so much, and there are uh, quite a few toxins, there are quite a a few uh, different types of toxins in fish and obviously when we extract the fish oils we tend to extract those toxins as well and certain fish oils if they're not cleaned up uh, if they're not particularly well treated uh, they can actually accumulate these toxins so sometimes fish oils can actually be detrimental unless they've been actually uh, you know correctly uh, extracted and correctly treated since their extraction so there is a potential risk from taking fish oils uh, why not go for the safer option, which is alpha linolenic acid, uh, which is readily available from, uh, in, for example, flax oil. It's also in hemp oil. Um, why don't we go for that? Well, it appears that um, certain uh, European uh, people of European descent appear to have a deficiency of the delta-5 desaturase enzyme. And this is the rate-limiting uh, enzyme that converts alpha linolenic acid into uh, icosapentaenoic acid. Uh, and because the activity of this enzyme is so low in some people, uh, dietary alpha linolenic acid doesn't really increase cellular levels of, of icosapentaenoic acid as much as you would expect. Um, and this is problematic because uh, it means that if you have, if you are a vegetarian and you take alpha linolenic acid as your source of omega threes, it means you might not be producing as much icosapentaenoic acid as you need. And icosapentaenoic acid can be converted to docosahexaenoic acid, so uh, you also won't be producing uh, as much docosahexaenoic acid as perhaps you need to have these beneficial anti-inflammatory effects. Um, that's why I always recommend uh, non-vegetarians to take fish oils rather than the plant-derived uh, alpha-linolenic acid because it's very difficult to know whether you have this uh, inability to convert uh, the alpha-linolenic acid to these other longer chain, more unsaturated omega-3 fats. It's better to be safe than sorry and fish oils have been shown uh, in, in the nutritional literature to uh, be much better at increasing cellular uh, plasma membrane levels of EPA and DHA. Um, so what can vegetarians do? Well, vegetarians do actually have another option and a much better way to obtain uh, your omega-3 fats uh, is to source it from algae. Um, algae can now be grown in tanks. They're grown in controlled conditions. They're grown away from pollution. Uh, and these algae produce uh, omega-3 fats. In fact, uh, this is how fish obtain uh, their omega-3 fats. Fish also can't produce uh, icosapentaenoic acid and docosa, uh, docosahexaenoic acid uh, um, without uh, uh, they don't have the enzymes to be able to produce it so they get their icosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid from their diet uh, and this is uh, this comes from the uh, microorganisms that the algae that they uh, that they consume that then bioaccumulate in in the fish and, and pass up through the food chain so algae are really the source of uh, dha uh, and epa uh, in in marine uh, organisms anyway so vegetarians can go straight to the algae and they can get their dha uh, from the algae uh, you then 
then have the delta 4 desaturase enzyme and the elongase enzyme which allows you to convert the DHA into EPA which will then build up in your cell membranes and both the DHA and the EPA will then have their anti-inflammatory effects. So the rec my, my take home message from this is to remember the ratio the important thing is to remember the ratio between omega-6 and omega-3. You should have, for every 3 grams of linoleic acid or linoleic acid uh, equivalents, which may be omi uh, other omega-6 uh, fatty acids, you should have 1 gram of omega-3 fats or their equivalents. Um, and that's an important ratio. The Western diet supplies way too many omega-6s and, uh, uh, and far too few um, omega-3s, and this is what causes uh, the inflammation associated associated with the Western diet and this is what leads to the oxidative stress and the inflammation that causes many Western diseases. So remember the ratio uh, and I would suggest that you uh, look for a very good source of fish oil if you're a non-vegetarian. There are sources that have been cleaned up. Uh, there are particular chemical methods that you can uh, you can uh, you can extract help with extraction of the fish oils to keep them in there keep them stable when you're extracting them and also then remove any pollutants that you uh, co-extract with the with the fatty acids and also look for a source that's perhaps got antioxidants added to keep those uh, very delicate polyunsaturated fatty acids stable while the uh, capsule is sitting on the shelf um, Always keep your fish oils in the fridge because cold temperatures will reduce the uh, reactivity of the of these very unstable polyunsaturated fatty acids. And try and buy small amounts of, of essential fats because they go off very quickly. Keep them in the fridge. The best ones are the ones that are in opaque um, capsules to, to, to protect them from the light. Keep them in a dark container. Keep them in the fridge to protect them. And buy small quantities so that you can use them up quickly. If you're a vegetarian and you want to obtain your DHA, uh, directly from your diet you need to go to algae there's still the algal sources of DHA are still quite expensive uh, but because the algae is grown uh, in tanks uh, they tend to be very uh, free of pollution so you're paying a little bit extra but you're actually probably getting a better product if you can afford the algal DHA uh, and you're a, you're a non-vegetarian and you want to go down that route I would recommend it um, studies have compared uh, the DHA from um, algal sources and from fish oils and they do seem to be comparable in terms of their ability to increase the omega-3s in your cell membranes so there's some information on um, the anti-inflammatory effects of fish oils. Um, if you are one of those people that can convert alpha linolenic acid, perhaps you've taken flaxseed oil in the past and it's worked very well for you. Uh, very well for you. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that you change. If you if you think that you're getting the benefits of your omega threes from alpha linolenic acid, that is probably uh, a better way of actually getting uh, your omega three fats because uh, because the the fatty acid alpha linolenic acid is not quite so unsaturated. It's only got three double bonds uh, compared with the five and and the six in in EPA and DHA respectively it's actually a little bit more stable uh, and therefore it's probably less likely to go rancid uh, and you don't seem to get met so many of the problems um, with it going off uh, but but there's there's some information try and keep your ratio at three about three uh, about three grams of uh, omega-6 to about one gram of omega-3 uh, and that should have uh, uh, the, the best uh, anti-inflammatory effects um, and if you find a, an omega-3 uh, source that works for you and you find a particular ratio I would recommend that you experiment with this and stick with what works for you because these 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 are just general recommendations and everyone has different biochemistry everyone has different uh, activities of their enzymes their enzymes work at different rates uh, and what won't works for one person might not work for another but these are general recommendations these are a baseline for somewhere for you to start um, try some fish oils and try and try and find a good source of fish oils it's worth looking around for these ones that have been treated uh, and ones that where the, the fatty acids have been respected uh, and they've been given antioxidants to keep them stable uh, and they're in opaque containers. So there's some there's some information about why fish oils are anti-inflammatory, and I hope that's been useful. Uh, if you've got any comments about this video, or you've got any anything that you want to add, please put it uh, in the comments box below, uh, and I'll try and get back to you and respond as soon as I can.